Welcome back, rum fans. My name's Steve the Barman, and I'm here to help you on your rum journey by mainly focusing on rums under £50 in the UK, or whatever that translates into around the world. Today, today's rum, it's a forgotten about one for me, but I'm going for Chairman's Reserve uh, Original Rum from St. Lucia, St. Lucia Distillers. It's one of these rums, again, I've got, because I've got flipping loads of them behind here, it's one of those rums that I just forget about. And it's a really good workhorse rum. There's not much I can really tell you about St. Lucia distillers. And I, I think they're the only distillery on St. Lucia. I'm pretty sure they are, but don't hold me to that. I don't I don't actually know if I'm being honest. But uh, for many, many years, this rum, uh, the sort of Chairman's Reserve original, was the kind of entry level, um, especially in the UK, to Chairman's Reserve. There wasn't a big, huge amount of sort of St. Lucian rums available in here. So this was pretty much the go-to. And then you kind of had a cut. The premiums were like the Admiral Rodneys uh, and stuff like that. And even then, I think going back going back yesteryear, I think there was only maybe one, maybe two of the Admiral Rodneys. But now there's a few more. Uh, but these days, actually, we have got, and I've heard this story a few times from, um, I forget who it is now, but someone um, from St. Lucian, the, the Stillers. They've actually got a, bount, a brand called Bounty. Uh, and they were just scared to sort of, and they didn't realise how good Bounty was. And Bounty is their sort of cheaper version of this. But they, it was kind of what the natives to St. Lucian, the St. Lucians, I should say, drink. Uh, but they were just kind of scared to release it to the wider world because they didn't, you know, they weren't too confident in it. But it's actually starting to take the world by storm. They've got the normal Bounty, uh, sort of a gold, I think they call it, a Bounty White, uh, a coconut, a, um, a spiced, uh, and there's various other flavours in there as well. And it is actually really decent in price. It's like 17 quid, 16, 17 quid in the UK. It's really good. So that Bounty has kind of gone as the real entry level, meaning this is a bit more of a premium upgrade, but it was always kind of seen it as a premium upgrade. It was never seen as like bargain basement entry level rum. It was just that there was no other St. Lucian rums uh, lo lower, is that the right thing to say? Or less less quality, uh, lower quality, that's what I'm trying to say, lower quality than Chairman's Reserve Original. So, you know, it's been certainly on my radar for the best part of 15 years or so. Um, 2000, I can I can pinpoint back to sort of 2004, 2005 when suppliers, wholesalers lists changed and St. And St. Lucian, um, Chairman's Reserve, St. Lucian Distillers was very much on that. Uh, so that's where I can kind of pinpoint um, to the UK. Now, what can I tell you about it? It is single blended uh, and they very clear that it's single blended. And what single blended means that it is actually a blend of pot and column still from one distillery. That's what single blended means. So you've got a blend of pot still rums and column still rums that go into this. So blended rum is uh, kind of basically can be anything, can be kind of um, sort of column stills, can be pot stills and that. But single blended traditionally refers to um, one distillery and they're using pot and column. That's my take on it. Anyway, what else can we tell you? Uh, I've put written down 0%. Now, what 0% actually means is, or should mean, is uh, 0 grams of sugar is added. It's an unsweetened rum. Uh, as far as I'm aware of this, I'm pretty damn sure of that. There's no sugar added to this. And I can confirm that from the taste. Uh, £24.95 logged out Master of Malt. So less than £25, which the other rums in its class is an absolute bargain. Right. Uh, and I don't think there's uh, an age there. Well, they, they definitely don't mention an age on here. They, there's no sort of reference to any aged rums in here at all. Uh, so again, you know, the information that comes out of that, and this, I, I need to chat properly to uh, to Dave Manchester Rumfest, Dave, uh, about this, because he's the UK brand ambassador for Chairman's Reserve and Solution Distillers. I need to chat to him properly about this. Uh, but I don't think they've ever claimed it. Like, it's like predominantly five-year-old or predominantly seven or whatever. It's just no age statement on it. It's just a, a decent blended rum. So let's talk you through the tastings. As always, I've got the mixers and the cocktails coming up at the end of the video. Video, my thoughts on how that works in specific mixes or how you would drink it. But to guide us through the tasting, we always use the Rum X app. I've really got, I really love this app. You know, if you watch me on the live shows, you'll know that I'm a big, big fan of this. So the first thing we have to do with Rum X is give it a colour. Uh, and scrolling through the colours, I've gone tawny. I think that's uh, kind of as close to tawny on the app as we can get. So I've called it a tawny rum. Now on the nose, what can I smell? This was a stunning. I just, I probably it's probably the first time I've revisited this this morning, in 
months, absolute months. And just to smell this was an absolute joy. It really kind of lit my face up. It's, it's amazing. I can still say it was smelling exactly the same things now. So I've written down fruit forwards, uh, caramel, vanilla. I get hints of banana on there. And I've also got sort of a subtle kind of woody, oaky vibes. Uh, the fruit, I can't be specific with that. It kind of is sort of loosely kind of um, dried fruits, but it is loosely kind of tropical fruit. It's just, I would just classify it as kind of fruity, if I'm being honest. Um, but fruit, caramel, vanilla, banana, and wood. And then what I'll do, um, I, as always, don't forget, I'll give you what other people have scored this on the Rumex, and I'll give you other people's comparisons across sections. So you can kind of see what other people think of this as well. This has been reviewed. I think I have to come out of it, but this has been reviewed. Where has it gone? Uh, where are we? 25 times on the Rumex. So not a huge rum, not a really, really popular rum, but you've got 25 people's other opinions to kind of go by. So, Right, um, what, so scores on the doors. I, as always, you know me, I add, if you've got the Rumex app, I add the sweetness in. I want to smell it and kind of think to myself, how sweet is this going to be? I've gone for a two. It's got something to it, but um, I don't think it's going to be overly sweet tasting. So I've gone for a two out of five there. Fruit, two out of five. Floral, one out of five. It's something there, but not too much. Uh, spices, two out of five. Woody, oaky notes, two out of five. Uh, roasted two out of five and rounded two out of five. I think in the, if you look at the spidergram on uh, the Rumex app, spider chart, spidergram, I think, you know, that's as much as a, a rounded rum that I will taste in this category. It's got a little bit of everything going on. There's not too much of, it, it's not outweighed by fruit. You know, it's as much fruity as it is woody, it's as much spicy as it is. Kind of, the, what, the least one there is floral. Uh, for me, but it's, you know, everything in sort of um, um, kind of, what's the word? In balance. Is that what I'm trying to say? Whatever. You, you kind of get the picture. So sweetness, I think two out of five, fruit two, floral one, spices two, woody oaky two, roasted two, rounded kind of two. Now, tasting. I had, I'd forgotten, I'd literally forgotten how good this tastes. <laughs> The first thing I kind of put up there was luscious. It really kind of, bearing in mind this is an unsweetened rum, the body, the character, the volume of that is delicious. It kind of just coats the mouth, not in a, a cloying, sugary way at all. It's just got so, for me, for a £25 rum, that's got a ton of body to it. And I really, really enjoyed that. The notes bouncing off it, chocolate and vanilla. Um, again, I wouldn't go dark chocolate. I go dairy milk. That's kind of the chocolate vibes it gives me. I don't think it, of it as a dark chocolate vibes in that sense. But vanilla, I put peppery alcoholic kick. It's got a nice kind of lovely warming, not ethanol, not fake alcohol, but lovely kind of warming alcohol sort of bite that kind of hits you in the chest and goes down into your tummy. It's really nice. Uh, and then kind of on the finish, those sort of woody, notes and just kind of that's where it's kind of hit me now those sort of woody notes come out but it is a luscious to hold it in your mouth for a couple of seconds it is a luscious kind of just warm and cuddly rum if you like on there 25 pounds pretty decent so uh scores on the doors uh sweetness this is bizarre because i'm pretty sure it is unsweetened i've given it a three because of those luscious notes i've given it a three out of five um fruit three uh, out of five uh, floral, one out of five. Spices, two out of five. Woody, oaky, two out of five. Roasted, two out of five. And rounded, two out of five. Now, the reason why I've given fruit three and not kind of um, sort of put anything down there in the taste notes, there is a fruit there. I just, I'm flipping, I can't pinpoint it. I really can't pinpoint it. It is, it's definitely not a woody, uh, oaky, whiskey fight kind of, barrel aged rum it is not that it has got fruit elements to it but i'd be bucket if i can sort of pick out what those fruit flavors are i'm hoping because i haven't looked yet i'm hoping i'll kind of get an idea uh, from what other people have got through there i wouldn't say coconut i wouldn't say banana i wouldn't say dry fruit it's just it's something i, I don't know i don't know um but yeah i so i've kind of given it this fruity kind of forward 
but that is kind of balanced out with that lusciousness of it. Uh, and just to go on the finish, I've put medium finish, uh, woody spice and the fruit kind of fade. So it is a woody, oaky, barrel aged finish to it. Um, the fruit kind of dissipates, I like that word, um, kind of dissipates, but it is there up top and front. So scores on the doors. I have given this 83 out of 100. I think for me, so 83, just to clarify, I've, I don't know why I keep looking. I've done so many of these now. Uh, 70 to 79 is good on the Rumex app. 60 to 69 is pleasant. Uh, 90 to 99 is excellent. So 80 to 89 is very good. But 25 pounds, I have to put it in the very good. For me, it's not up right up close to the excellence. But for me, it's certainly better than good, especially at that price. So I think 83 out of 100 at that price sits it really, really well. So let's go in and talk you through what other people have smelt. I should do this at the same time, shouldn't I really? But who okay, so we'll cares? We'll do it back to front. So uh, what we've got, what others have smelled on here? Caramelized, fruity, woody, molasses, vanilla, spice, coconut, alcoholic, strong, dark chocolate, roasted, barrel, floral, and dark. Um, so kind of pretty damn similar to what I'm get, getting there, to be honest. All right, the coconuts out there. People have got, and this is the thing, no one's really picked out what fruit. Someone's picked, a few people have picked out coconut, but plenty of people have gone fruity. So that's on the, that's on the nose. Right, on the taste, have we got anyone here that's picked out anything specific fruity on the taste? Right. Spice, woody, dry, chocolate, vanilla, leather. I don't get leather. Mm. Don't really pick up leather. Uh, strong, honey. That's a good shout, actually. I like honey. Nutty. I'm not. I'm not picking up too much nutty. Uh, barrel aging, which again is the kind of like woody, woody notes. Uh, it's a couple of people have put floral, light, peaches, roasted nuts, and roast, uh, roasted nuts and roasted. We've kind of got there. So that's really interesting. Uh, let me give you the breakdown of scores. I'll have to come out of this tasting bit. Right, so 26 ratings. So 26 people have reviewed this. And again, just to sort of clarify, on the Spidergrams, people are putting it, this is quite interesting. People are putting it quite fruit forward. But no one's really picking out what specific fruit it is. So I do find that really, really interesting. Um, but it's not, I wouldn't say fruit forward. It's as much fruity on the spidergrams as it is woody, roasted, rounded. Uh, definitely floral is kind of there. Interesting though, I think I'm the exception to the rule because not many people have put that as sweet. However, when you kind of look at the tasting profiles, they're getting off that vanilla, honey, chocolate. Um, I think you kind of do have to give it the three so to give you an idea most people it's averaging one out of five on the sweetness scale here and i've given it a three so take from that what you will um but i do think it's got an element of sweetness to it so just to give you overall scores on there um one person has given it a 40 so well it's a drinkable which is definitely better than drinkable it's 100 percent better than drinkable one person's given it 50 which is average I can, you know, I can see rum geeks that love their sort of 100, 120 pound rum looking at that and thinking, yeah, it's all right, it's drinkable. Uh, but for us, they're used to 50 pound rums. That is damn sight better than drinkable and average. The big, big players in here, a few people have put 60s. The big, big players are 70s. Uh, and, and so the big one is 70s, so which is good. And then quite a few people have put 80s as well. So I am kind of with the majority if you like i don't think it's i don't i don't think it's average i don't think i think it's better than pleasant um so i'm kind of happy with my score so um just to kind of get you onto the mixes here so as always i've got the seven mixes now or the seven ways to drink this rum and coke it's a really good rum and coke to be honest right this without going through them all is very much an all-rounder i love it with gingers, so we've got the ginger ale and the spiced orange ginger ale from Fever Tree, but that's Schweppes Canada Dry, and I've got ginger beer. I like them all equally. If I was gonna pick one, I would probably go rum and coke, but I would quite happily finish the ginger ale, or quite happily finish the ginger beer. I really, really like that. And that is a definite of an all rounder uh, for me there. And that's where, um, let's just go, let's just sort of talk through these. 
Uh, the daiquiri, the daiquiri, you know, you know my views on sort of aged rum daiquiris, if you like, on there. It is nice, it is pleasant, it is going to have a lot of fans. It's not, because of the pot still in there for me, it is not a daiquiri rum. I do, I'm a big sort of column, but lighter column still daiquiri fan. That's me personally. But there is going to be a hell of a lot of fans that love that as a dank. Uh, the rum fashioned, really, really good. Slight amount of sugar, Angostura bitters in there, really, really tasty. Works a treat. And the rum punch, again, I think it has got a bit of character. It does offer you something different. It's not a, it's not a kind of generic rum. So one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak and a dash of spice to make it nice. Uh, lime, honey and strawberry is my sweetener. Rum passion fruit juice as the week and then angostura bitters in there so pretty fruit forward fun and fruity punch and i do think the rum kind of does shine through i wouldn't say if i put a barbados rum in there would i have told the difference probably not but it has got elements of that sort of rumminess coming through that and i did quite like that so where does it sit for me i think it is very much a for the price, 25 quid, it is definitely a great cocktail rum. I'm not going to dismiss any of those. It's a great cocktail rum. But for me, it's a really, really good uh, kind of cheap rum and coke, decent rum and coke, rum and ginger, rum and ginger beer. It's, it's a pretty decent all-rounder, to be fair. It is, you know, if you're looking for one rum to kind of, what well, we might as well get into summing up now. If you're looking for one rum that's quite cheap, that, that covers all the bases, I think you're going to be hard pushed to beat that for the price. Is there better rums out there? Yes. Let's let's be honest. They're even at under fifty pound. There's a lot better rums out there for this. But this is a really, really good rum, and I cannot dismiss the fact that for less than twenty five quid, that is an absolute bargain. As I say, to kind of sum up the three questions I ask myself: Would I buy it again? Is it value for money? And what other rums does it remind me of? Let's go back to the front. What other rums does it remind me of? To me, it's got traits of Barbados in there. I haven't really gone down the real McCoy route yet from Foursquare, but it has got traits of Dorley's and it has got traits of the Plantation 5 in there. So it has got sort of elements of like a Barbados rum in there. It's definitely not screaming Trinidad to me. It's definitely not screaming, uh, well, any of the Spanish sort of speaking countries. Definitely not speaking anything like that. Um, so it is kind of... I would, I would go closer to uh, sort of Barbados than anything else for that sort of style of rum. Is it value for money? Hell yeah, £25. I'm not disagreeing with that. And would I restock it? I, do you know what? I, yeah, I 100% I would restock that for parties, for rum and cokes, for easy kind of sipping when you just kind of, fan, if you just fancy a rum and coke, I think that's a banger. I really do. 